Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Alec and Wyatt Weekly. I'm Alec McChesney. And I'm Wyatt Wheeler. We've got a heck of a show for you today. Lots on tap at Missouri State, but we're going to start talking about a team who won't be back next year in the Missouri Valley, Wichita State. What happened this weekend when the Bears met the Shockers at Hammonds Field? There was a lot of runs scored by the Bears, and there weren't nearly as enough, enough scored by the Wichita State Shockers. Missouri State killed them I, I mean, with a sweep. 33-10, uh, to 10, they outscored them all weekend. There was really, none of the games even felt like Wichita mm-hmm. State had a chance. I'm banking on Wichita State wanting to not come back to Hammonds Field after oh, that. Oh, definitely not. That was a tough weekend for them. But the more important thing isn't how bad Wichita State played. It's that Missouri State improved to 9-0 and on the, on, on the year in the Missouri Valley. What does that mean to them? Obviously, we ask them all the time, hey, are Missouri Valley games bigger than non-Missouri Valley games? And they say, no, each game is the same. But what does this mean right now to be 9-0 at the Valley? Well, first off, I think they're liars. I think, <laughs> I think they do think this is a little more important. But 9-0, and after, that's more wins already than they had all last season right. in the Missouri Valley, which is ridiculous because they haven't lost one yet. They still have a lot of games to be played. Right. So it's exciting. They're going to... They're well on their way to being the one seed when they play in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament at Hammonds Field. Right. And there's no, like, with the roster they have, with all the guys clicking right now, it's, they, they're ridiculous right now. And I think you mentioned that, it's the clicking. Obviously, we know Jeremy Ironman, Jake Berger, one of the best combinations of shortstop third base, that dirty left side. The best. It's, it's probably the best in the country, but... The thing that I like is Blake Graham came back this weekend and had an excellent weekend. Jake Berger had a great weekend, too, and he was named National Player of the Week. Obviously deserved, but But. (laughs) Blake Graham made Missouri State this weekend. He had a grand slam. He had nine RBIs. He had eight hits. He raised his batting average from that low 290 up in the 360, 370 range. And for that, Blake Graham is the first ever Alec and Wyatt player of the weekly yes you heard it here correct he was the best player this weekend for Missouri State so my question to you is can Missouri State run the table in the valley well it's baseball you can have a bad day you can lose you can just lose one nothing you can just have an off day right but you know I wouldn't doubt it from this team that like they're this is a special group obviously they're motivated they're, pro- they're probably an at-large even if they yeah. even if they somehow don't win in the tournament, but it's it's a special year for Missouri State I baseball. Think, I think if their pitching can hold up, they just have so much hitting. Oh. Obviously, Paulson's had an incredible year, too, but with Blake Graham getting going, if he mm-hmm. stays hot, the whole group, Hunter Steinman's leading Aaron on. Myers yes, on he's on fire. fire. I, we can't say enough about how good they are right now, but you know, in a few hours, they're going to take on Mizzou. Obviously, mm-hmm. last week, uh, beat Mizzou 5-3. to three. This week, they had them at home, where Springfield's college team as Jake Berger will say, is Missouri State. It Jake, is. So yes. that was, oh. Yeah, exactly. The billboard <laughs> tricked me. I thought it was Mizzou. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. And Jake Berger did say that one of the reasons he's so excited about this game is because Springfield's going to show off for him. What do you think happens against Mizzou tonight? Like, what do you think going on in that game? I think they I think they play with the energy we've been seeing all year. Mizzou's not a bad baseball team, but they're inspired to beat the heck out yeah, of yeah. these guys. This yeah. is this is. This is the real rivalry at Missouri State, the Mizzou Missouri State rivalry. Yeah. There's nothing like it here, and it's it's. I think they'll rise to the occasion as they do usually. I think I think to say that everything is firing on all cylinders for the baseball team would be an understatement. Mm-hmm. And I think you could say the same thing about the Missouri State basketball team after having a huge national signing day, bringing back Ronnie Ruscio, and we got Alize Johnson. Oh, right. Wow. Right. Well. We don't know. We don't know. What do you mean we don't know? Last week, Alizé Johnson announced that he was going to enter the NBA draft without signing an agent, which means if he goes and doesn't like it, doesn't get the prospects he's hoping for, he can return to Missouri State, and he has every intentions of. He said it. He said, hey, I'm planning on coming back. But what else did he kind of say through a retweet? He, like, he definitely, he definitely hints at the idea of entering the NBA draft and staying in the NBA draft. A couple weeks ago, he retweeted, Hey, just heard the Sixers called Frank Phillips Junior College to talk about former player and Pennsylvania native Alizé Johnson. Back to Pennsylvania as a Sixer? Listen, I'm digging deep here. I know that's journalism, and I know Twitter is a scary place for athletes, and I already apologize to all you freaking out about Alizé. 
but that scares me. He, he retweets this less than two, three days later, he's entering the NBA draft. Mm. Mm. If he goes and has a good <laughs> week and plays well, and they just tell him, hey, we'll take you with that last pick. We'll add you to our summer league team. It's tough for him to stay. And I don't know. I'm scared. It's... I'm not. Listen, I know you're not as high on this idea as I am. But how can you not be a little worried as a Missouri State basketball fan going forward until we know that he's officially coming back? Well, when it's your best player, for sure, you have to. It's going to keep you up at night thinking, oh, Alize <laughs> Johnson might not be a bear. But I'm not too worried about it at the moment. I mean, it's kind of a little thing like, oh, this guy's head's not with the Missouri State program. He's thinking more of, to his future. Right. But I think. I think he really means that he has the intentions of coming back. He's going to get some really good information right. when he goes and tests the waters, as they put it. But and I think and that, that is a new thing in the NBA. You can go, you mm -hmm. deal with the scouts and some of the coaches, and they tell you what you need. Mm -hmm. This is also a good thing for Missouri State as the basketball program because you're, you're showing other recruits, hey, we send guys, and they come back, stuff like this. But I just think another thing is with Ronnie returning and all of the momentum coming, it would be a strange time mm -hmm. for him to leave. So that's the reason I'm kind of holding out a little bit of hope that he is coming back. Especially when they're considered the favorites in right. the Missouri Valley. Yeah. So that's that's worrisome. But well, let's let's talk about some other draft news. <laughs> so it's like we're talking about the NBA and Thursday's the NFL draft. Yeah. Does Missouri State have somebody? No, they it? could. Wait, they do. They do. Dylan, Dylan Cole. Dylan Cole. Is he going to go Thursday, Friday, Saturday? The first round. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. The second or third round, probably not. I know Steck said he would like to see it. It's it's a dream, but right. he's a Missouri. He's he goes to Missouri State, right? And it's like I know Carson Wentz went number two Coach overall, right. but you know he's he's good. But yeah, Bill Cole's pretty good too. But this is he's a little short for the for to be like a number one prospect, right? But. I think he should go on. I think he should go on a Saturday pick. Yeah, I know that right now they have him in that early seventh round range, but we think he could even go as high as that late fifth mm -hmm. round, definitely early sixth. You know, we talk about all the time. Dylan Cole is one of those guys who can make any tackle, and he has every physical attribute. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the pro day. What did he show at the pro day? I mean, he could show that he showed that he was stronger than every man in the world. <laughs> And he could out jump Odell Beckham Jr., which Literally. I thought I thought yes. Odell Beckham Jr. could out jump everyone in the world, <laughs> exactly. but Dylan Cole can now. And and the other thing is, is in that late round area, mm -hmm. you're looking for a guy who has all of the intangibles. Mm -hmm. So he needs to have his head on straight. He needs to have good character. He needs to be motivated. That's Dylan Cole. You know, that's oh, yeah. the definition. We talk about mm -hmm. how he could be a perfect special teams guy. Mm -hmm. That's the definition of a special teams guy, in my opinion. You have to be ready to go make that tackle. You're never gonna have to convince Dylan Cole. To oh. go tackle somebody, and, and I think he's per I think he has the perfect build for it too. Yeah. He's fast. He's faster than what you think he'd be. Right. He's shorter. He can get under those blocks, and get get his pad level below the others. Right. And run down there like a crazy wild man and make the tackle. Yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say that he is going to get drafted. And if he weren't, if he was not drafted, he'll be picked he'll up. He'll be picked seconds, up instantly. Yeah. Seconds. And I think, and no matter what, this is a big day for the Missouri State football program. I think it'll be cool because we'll be at the spring game. Yeah. And there's a chance that he could be drafted right. while we're there. Right. And it could. And Steck told me that he'd like to hear it over to intercom. Yeah. And on on Saturday at noon there is the spring game, which obviously is another big thing going on at Missouri mm -hmm. State right now. A lot of quarterback controversy, some new options that are going to come in. And there's a lot of excitement going around the Missouri State football ground after two down years. Dylan Cole has a lot to do with that. So that's exciting. What else is exciting? Well, I am going to introduce you to the editor-in-chief of The Standard next year, my co-host, Wyatt Wheeler. Here he is. <laughs> Which means we have a vacant spot in at the sports editor. So... Uh... Would you like to be it? Right, listen, I guess if you, I guess so. I, if you guys will have us for another year, we would love to come back. Unfortunately for you, that means you're going to have to deal with Alec and White Weekly for a whole other year. That means so many more weeks of us and the Alec and Wyatt Player of the Weekly, which mm -hmm. is going to be a new thing. Which is an honor. Yes, it will. It's it might, a, you might not know honor. yet, but it will be. It's a huge thing. Every week. Everybody wants it. <laughs> And I've heard it. I think I've heard it. But yes, Blake Graham was the first, and he certainly will not be the last. But don't be shocked if Blake Graham wins another one mm -hmm. next week. So that'll do it for this episode of Alex and Wyatt Weekly. I'm Alex Weekly. And I'm Wyatt Weekly.